Hi guys and welcome back to the best podcast on the internet. It is the Milk Crown brought to you by the Castmark Youth Complex. Uh, you've got myself and Kirsty here tonight. Hi. You doing, Kirsty? You alright? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. And we're on our YouTube channel, which you're on the now. So if you can subscribe to our channel, like the videos that you're watching, um, ring the bell for notifications, and share our podcast as far and wide as you can on your social medias. We're always sharing it on our social medias, and you can get us on there uh, on our Facebook at Kelly Youth Complex Staff, on our Twitter at Youth Complex CYC, our Instagram is Youth underscore Complex, our TikTok is Kelly Youth Complex, and our email, if you need to get some advice or anything, you can email us at cycyouthteam at gmail.com. We've got youth workers on there um, Monday to Friday, um, and sometimes at weekends if you need the help, um, and we're always putting up information about um, what's going on in the community as well. Uh, so, I, Lee, did you say all the social medias on a one breath? Aye, aye. I think you did, like, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just get... I was just like... Ah, Oh, and another, and another, and another. <laughs> I forgot we had that many social medias. <laughs> See when we get better at all the tech stuff and all that. I'm hoping that well, the social soon. medias just come up and I don't have to say anything. And I'll just oh. say, here's our social medias here, guys. And it will just come up like above but my But you head. will have to if we continue to do just audio only. I know, that's true. That's true. I've no done the Podbean stuff that Chris asked me to do, so... Well, it's maybe I'll, 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 I'll try and figure out stuff with that because I'm not really tech savvy with that. So, very young people out there want to come and teach us. Hi, come and help us out. Uh, show us how to do it. Or if you're looking for any work experience with uploading stuff, happy to be references Aye. if you help us set Aye. this up properly. Definitely, <laughs> Definitely come and help. We're crying out. We're actually crying out for help. Yes. Getting... <laughs> if, you, if you've not noticed. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, it is the best podcast in, and the, in, I, in the world. <laughs> in the world, in the whole wide world. Um, so last week's episode, we spoke about Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day, like you were doing, or Palentine's Day. Uh, mm-hmm. We gave some advice and some things that you could do to keep safe on Valentine's Day, socially distance and, and other ways to stay safe if you are in a relationship. Um, we spoke about that today, so if you want to go and check out last week's episode, it's on our YouTube, but this episode is 33, and we've got an exciting one coming up for you again, don't we, Kirsty? Woohoo, 33, man, I can't believe it. Like, I actually can't believe that we're still going and we're still getting new ideas and stuff like that, but we're yeah. always crying out for new always. kind of topics and things like that. Um, so hit us up. Email us, get us on social media, or if you see us, shout it across the road. Right. <laughs> right. Dare to a pick on. <laughs> I love them out ground. <laughs> there was a teacher up at the school and I'm meeting the day who says he loves them out ground, so shout it. Oh, today. really? Aye. Who was it? Mr. Clark. Says yes. He so, how you doing, Mr. Clark? Oh, Mr. 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 Clark, Clark, do you know what? He is a CYC loyal, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He Love just it. loves a goofy. He's Love just it. like one of us. Exactly. We were on a Christmas night out once and we bumped into him and he just came and joined us. Patched his own place. Brilliant. Um, so, I last week was a Valentine's Day one. So, if you've not checked that out, check it out. Um, and then you can check out all our 31 episodes alongside that um, on our YouTube. And there's other stuff up there as well some recipes, some cooking videos, um, and some community information videos as well. So, check them out, please. Um, if you did check out last week, you would have saw the challenge between Kirsty and Lee. And it was a good genuine one, Oh, it was so good. Aye. So good. And see the clip that you got. Oh, man, it was so funny. So many people were chatting about it and they were actually howling, like, aye, like aye. oh my God. But people, like, are getting their, their own perception now because I'm going into school and some of the staff are going, what is actually a rang we used to? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know they keep on going like that. It gets weirder and weirder aye. every week. And I'm like, I'm happy with that. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> If it makes people laugh, we're happy. So it does get weirder every week. So we've done, now done four challenges and it's two each between us. Is it four challenges we've done? I've done the oh four. We've done the God. TikTok, the song, the shops, the <laughs> Chubby Bunny. Okay, so bunny. It's now over to you. Okay, so this week's challenge, so we are recording on Tuesday, which is Pancake Day, Stroll Tuesday. Um, so I am challenging you, Lee, to the best pancake making let's see your flip let's see if it's good if you've got a good edge to the pancake normally when we're in the uffie 
we make pancakes and every well I don't normally because I'm not allowed to cook in the <laughs> not allowed anywhere near the kitchen <laughs> uh, well I'm not allowed near it you know like supporting a, a 13 year old making a pancake <laughs> um, but I always burn mine and I always make it eye up and I can't flip it it rips in half and uh, it's just a mess um, so that is the challenge so basically you. you're saying I've got an easy win this week no, I've seen it when you used to try and make pancakes in Indigo and they've only like, so we just bought them in the packets for them. Yes. Because <laughs> it was still looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> we bought them in Lansley again. <laughs> <laughs> so what what kind of topping do you put on your pancake? Well, I might get to that later if we can leave oh, that for later. Is that right, all right? Okay. 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 Aye, sorry. I mean, I should have said that before the episode, but I <laughs> um I don't want to tell you. Don't know. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, that was so we're challenged to a pancake competition this week. I'm looking forward to it. I'll get that done the night or tomorrow and I'll record mm-hmm. it. And we'll put it up on our social media as I take it. Yes, we'll put and it up. And the young people yeah. and viewers get um, to get to vote can, on it. Yeah, we vote um see who's is the best, best technique, best Aye. looking, best totem. Aye. Like, we'll for that. Aye. So we need to make sure we don't have the same totem. I know. I know. What if a day? A bags of chocolate. <laughs> I've told you, I don't want to tell you my dream order than I. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right, that actually leads us on quite nicely to our nice news, because the nice news is that it is Pancake Day. So, Yay! We've also said on the UFA social medias, um, if you do make pancakes today, um, you won't see this until Thursday, but if you have made them and taken pictures of them, send them in. We'll be putting them up all week as well and just um, seeing how well you, get, you guys get on. And um, if they're really good, I'll just kid on it was mine. Aye. <laughs> And if they're really good, we want you to bring them in when the complex is open. Like make yes. fresh ones and bring them in. Make fresh mm-hmm. ones, but don't bring in the ones that. Because <laughs> <just laughs> well, no, it, it might be a while before we're in the complex. <laughs> <laughs> um, and our other piece of nice news was what we we Nick says the day. Um, she says that some people are getting back into school next week, which it's either nice news or it's no. I think it's maybe nicer news for parents and that, and it, Kirsty? Yeah, definitely. So it's primary kids, is that right? Aye, uh, uh, it's primary so kids. Primary one, two, and three, yeah. they get that's in, kids. so that's good. My nephew's in primary one and he is missing like the yeah. social interaction and uh, stuff yeah. like that. It's just, so that'll be good. And my niece, she's in primary seven, so she'll still be at home, mm-hmm. Um, but we'll enjoy our wee brother, no being about when she's trying Aye. to do her work. Um, so I'm sure lots of families will kind of relate to that. Yep. Um, and then in secondary schools, we've still got our key worker kids mm-hmm. will still be in. Uh, that's no meaning that there's any like 12 year old nurses or anything like that. I'm just meaning <laughs> <laughs> that if their parent or guardian is uh, a key worker, they get to access the school. Nice. Um, but then there'll be a wee bit more spaces for people doing practical subjects as well. Yeah. Um, so if you're unsure uh, of what's happening, your teachers and that will probably be in touch soon. Um, but if you're really worried and you're maybe uh, a wee bit anxious about it, pop us a message. I'm sure we'll put you at ease. Um, and if you are in either of the schools, I'm sure uh, one of us will be able to come and meet you. So um, if you're in today a practical subject and it's your first time you've not been in since before Christmas, might be a wee bit scary um, to come back in. So drop us a message and me, Lee or Kelly will meet you at Castmont High. Or if you are in St Margaret Mary's, then Linda, Michael and Mikey might meet you uh, there. So there's lots of people that will support you. So right. do not stress. No. Nope. It'll all be all right. And that's why we've got it in the nice news section. Yes, it'll, definitely. It'll be something good for them getting back to what we'd maybe call normality. Yeah. Definitely. And especially, like, when I was at school, practical subjects were my thing. Right. Like, right. I wasn't, like, one for, like, your kind of reading and writing kind of, or the kind of more academic subjects mm-hmm. that some people would call them and I was very much more about practical subjects so Aye. for people that have kind of not had that for how long like since before Christmas that's a long time mm-hmm. um and see when you feel as if like you're doing a subject that you're good at and you feel a wee bit more confident to then challenge yourself with the subjects that you're maybe struggling a wee bit with mm-hmm. because you've got your confidence back up and your self-esteem Aye. up so um 100% and I was in the techie corridor the other day and I seen some half decent good projects getting made. Right. Um, and they need to be finished. Need to be. Need to be finished. 
so that I can get my ma's Christmas, my brother's Christmas. <laughs> You don't want to go to Ikea or B&M for a furniture. No, I was like a shop now. I was like, ah, nah, right. <laughs> so I have a few cheeky spice racks in the mirror. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good to me. I wouldn't want the mirror the new, but if they're locked in, man, I'll need to go no. to the gym before I'm getting that mirror. <laughs> nope. Uh, this is one of the ones that you get in the carnival. You know, one of the funny uh, mirrors. Just makes you go <laughs> like... <laughs> Do that again? I, I missed. No, no. <laughs> so that is our nice news this week. Pancake Day and skills coming back. Um, so that brings us on to our next wee segment. And we did kind of touch on it, but um, we're going to take it further um, because it is what's on my telly and what's in my belly, Kirsty. So um, who's who's gone first this week? Uh, you go first because I'm, I'm chopping at the bit to hear what you're going to say. Right, OK. So on my telly this week is something... I've just watched it there, right? It's um, a quiz show that's on BBC Two um, after Richard Dosman's House of Games. So it's on for half six to seven. It's rotten. It is absolutely rotten, right? It's called Lightning. <laughs> and so the first round, I think there's seven people or something. I'm, I can't mind if it's six or seven. But they all have to answer a question, then nominate somebody else, and the, the timer counts down. If it lands on you at the end, you're it, right? Quite a good yeah. concept. The next one, you have to answer two questions, nominate, timer goes down. Next round, is um, you get three clues about something. And if you don't get it in the three clues, you have to keep answering until you get one in three clues. Right, okay. And the thing goes down. The next one's got a physical challenge, like the cube or something. Right, okay, okay. But you have to answer a question first. Then de- then it gets to the head-to-head, right? So I think all the stuff you've heard today, right? Just to Aye. get to the head-to-head, right? And you have to answer, then spell your answer. So if you don't spell it right, you do it. Oh, no. Um, and then that's like a timer thing as well. Then you get through to the final, right? No, you can't see the timer at all, so you you don't know when. What the oh, day. so you, you're right. So you're just like gauging, aye, aye. which would be worse because aye. you'd be totally like <laughs> like yeah. paranoid. No, you'd panic and stuff. Mm-hmm. The final, you have to walk along. So each question you get right, you take another step, and that's like a certain amount of money. You know the maximum they can make if they've gone through all that, three thousand pounds. <laughs> what? No, that's a lot of money. Get, that is a lot of money, but you get me a catchphrase. Aye, exactly. And this is, a, I think it's BBC. Their jackpots are rotten compared to mm-hmm. uh, ITV. Aye. But what they're expecting you to be able to know in day? No, no. So in the, in the final, you have to take a step with each um, question you get right. Uh-huh. You try to think, right, when's a minute been? Because you've got two minutes on your clock. So you've got to... Ch- Right, mm-hmm. so say you go like that right that's probably been about a minute and you stop at a thousand pounds then you have to try and get back with that thousand pounds in the time that you've left yourself but you might have only left yourself 30 seconds ah uh, okay yeah. okay no that's that feels as if you've got to work a lot right it could be a brilliant show if or... it was a lot of money like a lot more money and if see the woman that hosts it absolute bonnet so she is <laughs> <laughs> she's a dumpling she asked quick I'm Who is that that hosts it? Don't know. Some mad woman. <laughs> Never even seen her in my life, right? Should you be on it anyway, Kirsty? She should not be asking questions. Who Bradley, do you think should do it? Well, Bradley's starting to annoy me on the chase because he's getting slow as well. But this woman oh. is like, say I'm asking you a question. Say I go, what is the closest planet to the moon? No. Oh um, no, I hate that, especially when it's like a time challenge. Right, exactly. Because you're like, come on, like. Aye, that's. Aye. Mm. That is lightning, and I don't recommend you to watch it. I'll probably still watch it because I like quiz shows, but mm. it just annoys me a lot. Yeah. So maybe I should watch Lightning because that's where you're stealing your questions for. Oh, is it? I don't know. Might be. Oh. <laughs> well, that's what's on my telly. No, what is maybe, my... maybe every week then we should record. Just after that. <laughs> We're going to start recording the exact same time, is it? And just ask you the questions. As oh, you... no! <laughs> the podcast would be about two hours with it. I know, it'd be like... Those questions. <laughs> Nelly swore there, so I did. She gets paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, moving on to something nicer. What is in my belly? So, as you said earlier, it is Pancake Tuesday. Yes. You asked me a question, what is your 
Five, favourite way to have pancakes? Now, that was going to be my question and what's in my belly. So, it's pancakes that's in my belly. So, mm-hmm. I would have my pancakes with Nutella and nothing else, just Nutella. I don't have strawberries or whipped cream or anything. I just like it with Nutella. Just now, Nutella? I, if I'm in America, I'll have it with bacon sometimes for breakfast. Oh. Yeah? You know, a fan? No, I'm definitely merely a sweet pancake right, so what do you go for? Pancake-er? That's not even a thing, but it's a thing now. I'm a sweet pancake <laughs> <laughs> um, Me and my pal went to that um, Stack and Still right. uh, in Silverburn, so it's like a pancake restaurant. Aye. Um, like diner type thing. And uh, I got oh, they were the fluffiest pancakes in the world. Right. And um, I was watching everybody's gone past and I was like, oh... So me and her got like sweet stuff, so I got like peanut butter, I think, and Nutella and fruit, oh. and uh, she got gluten free ones, and uh, then the people were getting like full scale, look like breakfasts on them, and aye. like, got, like chicken strips and all that with them. Like. Aye, I'm like, oh. aye. I'm but then you. so we were having a pure debate about it, I'm like that shouldn't be allowed. But have you ever had a fry up, right? We are fried pancake, <laughs> but we are fried pancake. No, I've never had that, no. Go to try it. Go to try it. But you need to keep it away if you like bean juice and that. Oh, oh. (laughs) You've ruined what's in my telly, what's in my belly. (laughs) We're going to leave this segment out now because you've just said that. (laughs) I don't like that. (laughs) So you only have Nutella? Aye, sometimes butter, but aye. I don't like brewing pancakes. I think, see, if you put too much on it. See, when we make them with the wains at the earthy and they put, like, everything they can on it, mm. and just, like, you can't be enjoying that. Mm. And then they're bouncing off the walls after it, so... True. I'm an old then man. send now. them home. <laughs> I'm an old man now, but I can't have that sugar amount. Like, mm. I'm making them after we record this, and it's going to be pretty late. It's going to be It's going to be late. You're going to be awake, like... Hi. <laughs> and as an old man, I can't be awake at that time. No. I don't like um, you know when people have like lemon and sugar. Aye, aye. I just taste like like a Brillo washing up pad. It's disgusting. <laughs> fairy liquid, don't it? Aye, but a fairy liquid or like a bit of toilet cleaner. That's what it aye. tastes like. Aye. No, that I've ever ate fairy, eh, fairy liquid or toilet cleaner. <laughs> I'm not doing that as a challenge, right? <laughs> oh, that would have been good. <laughs> you might do, but you don't realise. Aye. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so that's right, well if you only put chocolate on yours, then I'll let you put chocolate on yours. No, I can still design one, like Aye. For the challenge, aye. Right, okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I'll still make one that's nicer than yours anyway, is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, uh should I tell you what I've got? No, no, save it for the picture. Right, okay. Aye. Right, so that's what's on my telly, lightning, or as I would like to call it, <laughs> <laughs> and in my belly is pancakes. Now, I did have some this morning, so I can't just, I'm not just making that up, but I'm having some later as well. Okay, okay. Well, I've, I've not had any yet, so I'm going to make some after this oh, and good. see what a technique is. <laughs> your flipping technique. Your flipping, like, you're flipping off, your flip off, you want to call it. Flip <laughs> off? <laughs> <It's> something else. <laughs> <laughs> Flip you. <laughs> well, that's what's so, on my telly and what's in my belly. So what's on right. your telly, Kirsty? What's on my telly is I've been watching. So I started watching it last night, and it is it's good. Can I? You don't need to think, telly. Um, it's called what's it called again? Uh, Are you the one? No, is it? Aye, that's it's called. Are you the one? And they've got this big thing. So it's uh, all these. Um, like Americans and the, it's like a dating programme and they're all in Hawaii and they have been like they're all single and like they've filled out all these like questionnaires and they've spoke to like their ex-partners and their family members and they've done all these kind of tests and whatever to find out who their perfect match is meant to be mm-hmm. and they found their perfect match so there's 20 of them Right. And so there should be 10 couples, mm-hmm. but they don't tell them who their perfect match is. Right, okay. And they've got to guess 
who their perfect match is. Oh, right, yeah. So they're, they're chilling and they're doing the, um, it's a wee bit like Love Island, like they're doing like challenges and stuff like that together. Um, and then instead of going to like the fire pit and Love Island, they all go to like this like screen thing, you need to like put your horn on it and see if you and your partner's matched, right? But it doesn't tell you, you do, it scans the hands. Right. Then you go and sit down and then they all need to wait. And if the lights shine up, so there's 10 lights that are there, and a light shows for every time there's like a, a match. Mm-hmm. But it only show you the light, but it doesn't tell you who the matches are. Right. So the first couple of times they did it, they got a couple of matches. So it was like love at first sight yeah. and they like were attracted to these people. Then they did it the second time and some of them swapped and they got less lights. Right. Because they didn't know that they were the the right ones so they're trying to figure it out and who's meant to be the right people and who just fancies somebody but doesn't like fancy like their mind if you know what i mean like they just are physically attracted to them and stuff um so then and then there's lots of like arguing because they can win one million pounds wow so split between them that's 50 grand it's, it's pretty no, good it's no 50 grand it's five hundred thousand. Five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah, best I'll, I'll, that's I'll, the best dyslexic moment of my life I'll split a million pound with you if you want <laughs> I didn't know how it'd go about it as well I didn't want to oh. <laughs> so it was just like I totally missed a zero like <laughs> doing well <laughs> oh doing well right well anyway that's how much they get. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they if by the end, so they get 10 chances to do this over this amount of time. Right. Uh, and at the end, you can see if they're if they're gonna win like the million pounds. Right. So even if you don't like your match, this is what on paper is supposedly meant to be your perfect match. Right. Um so and there's a few people that fall in love that aren't matches. So they send them to this wee room and it's called like the perfect match detector. Right. Um, and that's the only time where they're told through the full thing if they are matches mm-hmm. until the very end. And they go in the room and so there's this couple that like pure fall in love, first day, whatever like that. And then they're like, I don't think they're a match. No, I think they're a match. So they put them in this room and they're not a match, mm-hmm. but yet they still want to be with each other. Yeah, they, they don't care about the money. Yes, but then the rest of the people are like, no, I want the money. Like, <laughs> so, hey, it's good. We should get that watch. So that's what's um, on my telly. I definitely won't be watching that, but I'll pass it on to Brit. <laughs> <laughs> I've basically just watched it, though. <laughs> with you telling us. Oh, man. It's, it's really good. I like it. It's no my thing, but I, I can imagine why people would like it. But I think Brooke would love it, so I'll tell her. That's Aye. a good recommendation for her. Okay, uh, and what's in my belly? So, what I was having the day for my lunch was, I was like, do you know what? I pure miss a baked tortie at the Right. I was like, I'm gonna recreate this. I don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I, it's just not the same. It's not no. the same. No. I was like mixing up my tuna and that, and I was like, oh, yes, Janet, so I'm going to take a picture of this and send it to mm-hmm. Janet. I didn't take a picture of this. No, no. I was ashamed. Aye. Aye. What was your filling? Just tuna meal? Aye. I never had red onion. She normally gives me red onion. Right. Um, and then I had coleslaw, but it was it was like just like as the coleslaw. Mm-hmm. No. Janet's coleslaw. No, no, Janet. <laughs> apparently, Janet's coleslaw is incredible. Chris oh, it is. It is. It's up there. And I was like, oh. and then my salad, I was just made my salad too right. wet. So you, <laughs> you know, rubbish. What's in your belly is rubbish, and what's on my telly is rubbish. So yes, I. Episode 33. Is, <laughs> we're running out of things to say because it's getting all <laughs> <not> rubbish. <laughs> Right, oh well. So, so we Nic- need the Yuffie back open so I can get a big toy. <laughs> aye, aye. So Nicola Sturgeon, I know you watch the milk round every week. <laughs> complexes. <laughs> Come on, I'll even get you a big toy for aye, free. Aye. <laughs> Tasty coleslaw, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we have got um, an exciting episode this week. I know I've spoke about <laughs> for about half an hour there, and it's. <laughs> 
it's, it's probably not been exciting because we us two talk nonsense all the time. But uh, we've got a guest coming on this week, uh, and our guest this week are two members of a local band called the Modern King. So I'm going to bring them in just now. So oh, this week, this week got Sean and Drew from the Modern King. So here they are. Hello. All right, guys. How you doing? What's happening? How's things? I know bad yourself. Aye, all good. Thanks, all good. Uh, just introducing you there. Um, I think you've played the youth a couple of times before, so some of your older yeah. members might know you, um, and people say about the community might know you if they're watching as well. So um, it's good to have you on. Thanks very much for coming on. Aye, uh, cheers for having us. Um, Sean was saying you were saying uh, that you watch, you know, you listen to podcasts uh, quite a lot. What's your favourite podcast? Favourite podcast, and it's mostly like it's a lot MMA driven, but. Comedic thing, that kind of circle, do you know what I mean? That's what I got in there. I got in there, I was, um, I was working in Auckland in New Zealand and I was having to work my cell every day, so I started getting into all that. But I like, um, I listen to Tim, Tim Dillon a lot now. Uh, I don't listen to Rogan as much since he went on Spotify. Right. I don't know why, but because I think it's just the convenience of having, I don't know, downloads on your phone, the other ones. I, I know it feels stupid, it's a fair daft thing, but I don't know why, I just don't bother with it anymore. Uh, Mostly all MMA in that. I like a wee, like a wee crazy conspiracy one. I was just saying that to Drew. Like, I try and pick a maddest one. Right. Just just for fun and work. Just like, because I, I love hearing how excited they get about, you know, you know the two of them. I don't know if the two of them will think they're bamming each other up or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's that far-fetched. Just watching two crackpots. Uh, it's, it's that far-fetched. And one of them is like, oh my God. <laughs> And the other one's like, I'm like, I, I basically a stay with aliens or something, do you know what I mean? I share a flash <laughs> on an alien and he's like, I can't believe this! It's just, it gets, well, a few people at the end. It gets me through the day sometimes. Uh, and it's it's probably always Americans that make grey ones or people for gas smoke. Yeah. <laughs> the Americans are pure dramatic, man. You know what I like? Everything's uh, just pure. I think if it was a kind of like, if there was one that was like, Cast mountain and alien kind of thing, it'd just be like kind of here. I've got an alien steam, it'd be like, it'd be, it'd be, cool. it'd be normal here, it'd be like, it'd just be like, soft, bro. Me. Soft, bro. Soft, bro. <laughs> my parents are aliens. <laughs> for the oh, remember that? <laughs> that was a classic, classic. Right, um, so we ask every guest when they come on. I know we went after a wee tangent there, but we ask them, um, as soon as they come on, because we've just finished a wee segment, what's on your telly and what's in your belly? So Drew, will we go for you first? What's what you've been watching? Yeah, do it. Last thing I watched was the Cecil Hotel on Netflix. Yeah, I watched that. Yes, how creepy is that? that Aye, it was. I seen it. I seen it years ago. Uh, you see the wee pop ups on Facebook, like mm-hmm. kind of articles about it. Mm-hmm. But once it came up on Netflix, I was like, "I'll give this a watch" because it was like, "My day, man, what's actually happened there?" Do you know what I mean? But. Mm-hmm. I thought personally that they could have just put the four episodes into the one episode. Into the one, hundred percent. It was just dragged out. There was a lot of side mm-hmm. stories and all that, and it was just kind of pointless to me, do you know what I mean? But I, I, I genuinely think that the lassie's maybe took something and she's maybe went a bit psychotic mm-hmm. and made her way up to the tank and the rest is history, aren't it? Aye. Spoiler alert. Aye. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Don't watch it, man. Don't watch it. <laughs> I, I thought that... Um, See when they interviewed, you know, the couple that stayed in the hotel and they asked to move room and everything like that. As we all know where this is going. Like, you know, I know as well. Who would, who would drink black water? Exactly. Brown water, know what I mean? I know. So, like, <laughs> we were washing in it really, and then, like, you just knew, and they were still it. You're like, why don't you just go at the tank? Like, I thought the receptionist, I thought she was a bit wacky. There was something, <laughs> she was the, she was the uh, playing with a full deck, <laughs> so to speak. So, I thought she was a bit mental. <laughs> you loved the, the last thing I ate was uh, sausage rolls. There you go, sausage rolls. Good roll with a sausage roll. Was it uh, a sausage roll, Greg? as in like for Greg's? Aye, Greg's obviously. What be honestly? Aye, what would be. Did you come off? Have you tried? I know a good one. man. Put him in the air fryer. Fifteen minutes. Have you murdered all the mention of sausage roll? Put him in the air fryer. Look how you like it. Just oh. quick. Sorry, sorry. Have you tried the vegan ones? Nah. No, they're actually, they're actually quite good. I'll... They're nice. What do they taste like? Just, just, just garbled ones. Garbled. It's garbled with pastry. No, they're actually alright. I've had them. I like them. I thought they were nice. We got them in the UFA a couple of times and I thought I felt as if the pastry was much like 
fresh. Aye, it's not as crazy or anything like that. Just a bit... Aye, it was really nice. Sean thinks it's tastes like cardboard because he just picked up one of the wee leaflets you get through the door. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just put the box in the oven and we'll put the box. You know what I mean? It's all going the same way. That's true. That's true. What about you, Sean? What's been on your telly? Uh, when was the last time I watched? A programme called The Drowning. It was on Channel 5. It was like a kind of, I had four part drama. Right. That was the kind of opposite. Does that mean that just, that went just far too fast? It was like, they could have started start out. A wee bit more, if you know what I mean. It's like, it's just like, I was watching it going, it was about, what the fuck she doing in there? And can I swear? Shit. Sure. <laughs> you put PG, mate. I'm oh, doing well. Yeah. First one, he bought. You've done it, you've done it. It's all right. Kirsty's on. Yeah, yeah. no, it's all right. It's not open, man. I think we had to get started. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you just went too fast. It's a bit, it was good, but I mean, eh. Was it scary? Uh, no, it was just, I mean, it was merely a kind of, just a drama. Just what a was drama. it? Just a, a way that it was supposed to have drowned and then he was supposed to know I drowned and they found him. He was supposed to be, he was missing and then, oh, I don't even, do you know what? I, I, I probably didn't even watch Did that. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> was it good? It was all right. Oh, it was not bad. Was right. it one of the ones yeah, where you don't, you don't actually watch it, you just spend time on your phone half the time? Like... I will. I go, I go that way about the second episode just mm-hmm. because I thought it was going too fast because it was a bit unbelievable. But, I don't, as I say, it could have been dragged. I think, I think you've just... Who, 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 who am I? Who am I? Exactly. I think Sean's just watched four adverts for it. Uh, <laughs> four adverts for uh, sausage rolls. Uh, <laughs> vegan sausage rolls going into a big pot of tea like that rains down. <laughs> this is going too fast. Oh. <laughs> oh. Aye, so no, that was the last time I watched. I watched that what, Sunday or whatever I watched. That. Aye. What about uh, what's in your belly? What have you been eating? The uh, last time I ate was I had sea bass at the air fryer before Thank I came along here. Aye. So <laughs> completely different for his sausage roll. Sea bass in air fryer? Is that is that a hang? Right. Sea bass in air fryer. This is not a bandit. <laughs> you actually supported sea bass in air fryer. Sweet man. That shit is dumb and dumber in it, and he goes like, "Kick his ass, sea bass." Are you sure? Oh, I said ass, man. It's in the dictionary, man. Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Right, you're going to have to edit this after because I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> he hates editing that one time I um, um, may have accidentally swore and he um, was trying to figure out how to edit it and he just shouted over when I was swearing going be. can you just put that wee that wee like, edit in it the wee bleeping thing can you just do that uh, no, well I think Chris Ritchie can but uh, Lee just shouts edit that's it that's it just shout louder <laughs> just shout louder <laughs> <laughs> Aye. We're in season three anyway. I think last week there was a swear word for you, Kirsty, and we just left it. So I think we're gone rogue. We're gone rogue for the complex. Well, <laughs> the milk crown's becoming the rain. Aye. Aye. So um, we'll just jump in. It's an interview, but it's no real inter- interview. We say this with all guests. We just kind of have a wee chat with them um, cool. and just ask you some questions. And um, we wanted to get you on because he's a very fair area. Um, he's both play music in, in your band, The Modern Kind, which I grew up like following you. You were brilliant. I loved coming to see you. Um, and then Cheers. you said a wee time away and now you're he's, he's back to make music. So I was just going to ask you a wee bit about, about your time making music and that. So the first question we were going to ask you is how did you get into music and how did you meet and start up the band? Like, what was your thinking behind it? Well, how, how I got into music, I was kind of brought up with my dad's, my uncles, all playing music, all listening to Britpop, Pink Floyd, all that kind of stuff. There's always guitars on about like my grannies and my house and all that kind of things, you know what I mean? So it was just a matter of time before I picked one up, but I was about 15. Eh, I picked up the guitar and played a bit of, I think it was Wish You Were Here, the B riff, do, 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 played yeah. that, and then from there, just kept kind of playing, looking at chord books, and, and then a couple of years down the line, eh, I bumped into Sean eh, through family, and eh, he was picking up the guitar as well, so... We just kind of hung about a lot more and we were writing songs and just trying out new things. Then got the band together, got a couple of members off the gum tree. Our drummer, Matt, who still ways to this day. And uh, we just got in a studio, man, just trying to make a sound, make a, make a bit of a noise, see what happens. Right. But it's been, it's been like a on and off thing for years, you know what I mean? Because we done it a couple of years ago and Sean was in the band uh, with a couple of new guitarists. We done a couple of gigs and that, we wrote new songs and that, and it was good. 
Uh, last year, they get back to Gurham. Uh, Sean's came back, and we've got uh, it's me, Sean, and Ian, uh, the drummer. We've got a new bass player, and we've got Mark Brown, who was jamming me the last time. He's on lead guitar, but he's, he's, he's away working in there somewhere. But basically, the COVID, that's just that's just pure hampered what we're doing. Aye, aye. We were planning to get a couple of uh, recordings done before Christmas uh, out at Recife, out towards Fourth Road Bridge, wasn't it? Aye, 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 aye. Basically, because of these restrictions, that it's just pure slow days down, and it's the aye, same way rehearsal time and that as well. Aye, but, aye. Uh, it's funny that, isn't it? You, you go into Gumtree and you can get band members. Like people are usually. Aye, there's, there's, there's websites out there. There's, there's, there's it, uh, you've got a website called Join My Band and that as well, and it's just it's like Gumtree. Is there any people like in? You can always find people in a book that's why I play music. Is it that we got Kev out there? Aye, we got the Kev out there. Yeah, we got a bass player out there. And he's, he's brilliant, that means. Aye. Just feel lucky he was the first guy that came and tried it and it just fitted in perfect, do you know what I mean? So mm. that's what it's worked out well for us. Aye, it's because it's more like the pure, the done thing. Look, especially if you play for this kind of area, do you know what I mean? It's, that's what's amazing, by the way, I love it, but... Uh, you don't see a lot, you don't hear a lot of musicians, you know what I mean? But you've got no. these websites and Gumtree and all that, and you can find people with Finn Glasgow who get the same interests in the back as I say, make a noise. So you as well use it and see where see where you, see where you uh, go with that. Yeah. You were saying you were 15 and were you just self taught then? You never did it at school or anything? Like ah, well, I wasn't totally self taught. Uh, my dad's pal, uh, Scott McLaughlin, he showed me. A few chords. He was in, I'm sure he was in a band called Coalition. He jammed with the Cosmic Rough Riders at one point. I might be wrong there, so don't quote me. <laughs> but uh, he was he was a cracking guitarist and he actually still works. I, well, the last time I heard from him years ago now, but he's working in the community teaching young people music and that. So mm -hmm. but he, he showed me the first kind of chords to get me going. And then for there, I just got books and just built it for there kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? So what is it you play? I play uh, acoustic guitar, uh, I write songs as well, and I sing for the band. What about you, Sean? Well, I'm, I'm guitar, I'm a guitarist, I'm a loving guitarist, and I saw the songwriter, I saw the well, do you know what I mean? Um, I learned it all, just going back to your first question. I was, I grew up uh, when I was living in my granny's house, and I was running about my uncle a lot, and he's, he's, he's a brilliant guitar player. He was in the band for one, at one point years ago. Yeah, sweet. And, um, like, I was always running about it, but I never bothered with it. I don't know if I subconsciously took a lot of it in mm -hmm. because it was like, like being older and like, you know yourself, Lisa, when you're running about the house party with the guitars and all that. Aye. That's when I started getting into it when I was about Aye. early 20s. And um, I went to my uncle and I was like, oh, I want to learn how to play guitar. And he was like, right. And he showed me just a few basic chords and he, I picked it up that quick. He just handed me a, the Beatles chord book and gave me a guitar and just went away up the road. Aye. So, and for that, like, I just kind of just taught, I've just taught myself, do you know what I mean? I've written. Right. Um, we went, say, you went for house party, house party playing music, the usual covers and all that. Then that's when I went through, and then I oh, started snowballing for the end. They kind of like, he wrote a song. So I was like, all right, I'll try and write a song. So I wrote a song. And then he wrote another one, and I wrote another one. And then that kind of, people were going like, actors, oh, they're quite good. And that, that led into the, why don't we try and start a band? But it's the start of every American teenage film, isn't it? Uh, it's a dream, isn't it? <laughs> like, like, it's a dream, isn't it? Life gets in the way. Life gets in the way. It's in the way for both of us, like, in regards to the music with the band. But we've always managed to find our way back to it. And it's like, this time round, we feel a bit more accomplished, like, kind of, with maturity. And uh, what else would you say? Just, like, musical knowledge and that as well, I suppose. Uh -huh. But... This time when we're a bit more serious and our ideas are more realistic and our, our hopes for it are more realistic. Aye. It's because when I was 18, writing a, band, writing a song for a band and then in a band, you're like, ah, right, got to be number one in the charts and all that, world tours and all that. You're just, you're just a wee boy, do you know what I mean? But 10 years down the line, you're like, ah, right, I want to just make music and get records out and just see what happens. And if people like it, they like it, innit? No, that's it. And it's actually a date for you. It's a thing you can never master. You're just always constantly trying to improve yourself. See, like, say, years ago as well, when when we were at that, like, I'm sure if like, you've been to the gigs and all that, like, we'd, we'd go and do gigs and we'd, we'd be getting these brilliant opportunities and we'd be just getting swallowed before it. Like, Aye. Completely, just completely like, out it. Out it. And, you'd be, like, and you look back on that now and going, 
aggressive. Do you know what I mean? We got, we, got, we got put in a good few positions where uh-huh. people with support slots. Uh-huh. It wasn't even just that. It was like, try, you should have been trying to network with these people mm-hmm. that, like the managers and that, are the people now, and we were too busy. You're caught up in it, but do you know what I mean? You're uh-huh. boys. It's, it's not anybody's fault. You're caught up in a mindset as well as a dream. That should be, mm-hmm. I can allocate it, you know what I mean? It's trying to, try to differentiate between the two and uh-huh. prioritise what's more important. You know what I mean? And now, it's going to roll reverse. The mindset's changed. That's what's more important. Like, where am I taking this to the next stage, the next step? Whereas back then, you thought it was just all going to come. Do you need order? And it's not, that's just not how it works. So any advice I would give... You can look back and be like, oh, no, I like living right in the moment of it. You were saying uh, um, you picked up like the Beatles chord book and stuff like that. Who else was your kind of influences? Early, I was I was massively influenced. Oasis early on. Same as the same as the same as the back nineties Britpop. Aye, back then it was aye. the biggest thing. Um, but I kind of then I was like right obsessed with the view for a good few years. Like really, that was that was my my thing. And then I just I think Arctic Monkeys after that kind of. I, like, I took right hold of them and I think the jump to Arctic Monkeys kind of opened my like, like my mind up to other music whereas back when I was younger it was like just Oasis The View or nothing or like, uh, a couple of wee hits for other albums here and there but when I started going to Arctic Monkeys and learning about what they done type thing and the, the, the kind of just the kind of the way they done things was just totally on. Like, I, I love Alex Turner's lyrics and all that. Do you know what I mean? I could sit and listen to it for days, and just it just opened my mind up to all different things, and it made me go back the way on music as well. I'm ashamed. I must say, you know I, mean? I was to Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back right in the late sixties, seventies, but I'm also listening to I'm listening to grime and all that as well. I'm listening to kind of all sorts of stuff that's yeah. going like current trends and all that as well. The thing is, like with, with grime, for example, that. Most people don't know me when expect me to listen to that, but I like the lyrics to it. I like the lyrics to it. It's just, it's dead thought, dead thought out, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's not, I mean, it's to create a grind track personally, but I just, I, I, like, I like the lyrics, you know what I mean? I'm these boys are singing absolute madness, but it sounds, sounds good. I see you know some... I mean? But you need to open your mind. Uh, see, if you want to be successful with music, you can't stick to a certain genre. You need to try everything and listen to everything and go, right, I could take something for that, I could take something for that. Aye. You came up with. Do and I suppose mean? you see that with a band like Arctic Monkeys, didn't you, Sean? Like a lot of aye. albums have progressed for oh. whatever people. Aye. Say. That's what. That's what I mean. They're evolutionary like, years. Aye. They've not just stayed in the one place. They've constantly, <laughs> constantly went forward. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think. I think there's a even see when we were younger. I always remember there's a sort of thing like I don't know if it still exists now because everybody's got that much. Like you see, you've got such a, like, access to all different types of music. That back then I remember that even if you liked a song, you may want to tell your pal you like this song. Aye. You get that? Because you'd be like, you like that, it. and you'd be like, no. Are you slags for it? No, no, I don't. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if it's still that, but I remember I used to write some kind of cheesy pop thing years ago, and I'd be like, I would never tell anybody. It's just as old as you get, man. The less you be, ah, know what I mean? I don't let people hang you, but you're at that point you've lived a life and you've had ups and downs. You're like, I like what I like, and I've not got time to. Try and please people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I could probably hold you back. See, as you being a young person and no being honest with it, no being honest with yourself as well as what, what you like. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Because that, that could probably hinder your like, like your creative process. Do you know what I mean? Because oh, that sounds too much like whatever. I bet my pals only like that. Right. If you like it, just do it. You, you like it. Sure. To yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know, Barbie Girl is one of the greatest songs. I love it, man. We will cover it. <laughs> you've got a routine to that as well, haven't you? But we'll just leave that for the next one. Aye, we'll keep back to the next one. My knees. My knees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were speaking earlier about how COVID's affected music, and uh, you were saying it's affected yours, yours as a band. Um, how Aye. has it affected you, and how do you think it's affected music? Well, it's, 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 it's just basically took your legs away from you, and it's, and it's not just us. You look at the top of the chain, or the big selling artists, and what they're able to do. I all right, they'll maybe get the home studios and all that kind of stuff and they can record for them too, but that's all they, all they can really do. Mm-hmm. And in, in terms of live music, like for a grassroots band like us, we can only build a following off of live performances and getting stuff out there. But no. we can't even get into rehearse to even get for there to go and play live. Do you know what I mean? We, we're, there's the COVID restrictions are meaning that you can't get into a rehearsal room, uh, you can't get into a studio, 
you can't play in a live venue. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. for us, you know, all we all we're kind of doing, and we're, we're in a group chat as a band, as you could imagine. We're just send, we're writing we de- we demos, acoustic demos. We're sending them to each other, try to change wee bits, and Brilliant. we're just building material just now, isn't it? and and see, hope waiting for the, the green light to get back in and get working again. Right, I think we're planning now is to be ready for whenever when it uh, does. Still, you still need to get in and rehearse for that as well. And I've just, everything's just totally shut down now, as usual. Aye. Everybody knows it's, it's, it's done. I mean, there's nothing going on now, but. But once it's open, there's going to be a high demand, probably. And then you. Aye. Aye. And you know what? There's probably going to be a lot of bands that have wrapped because of this, because. It's no like a lot of people in bands that it's no known for being people with like full time jobs. Full time jobs, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, with with this going on, that the like people are probably struggling even more for money. Oh, to find money to find, so it's probably going to be there's going to be a big hit in the industry basically. Uh, I think like on on that level, like the, the pubs and that. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of, a lot of guys don't kind of afford that. Like the amount of guitars and stuff I've seen on like Gumtree and everything. Uh, do you know what I mean? It, Often lots of people that are in, involved in the music scene just because of like the hours of work and whatever like that. Maybe they work part time in hospitality I, or as well. So having lack of any of that at the moment is is really. Quite I, that's what I mean. It's just hitting everybody. It's, it's, I don't think we've actually seen this, that the full extent of this yet. Mm-hmm. The but maddest thing, the maddest thing I seen was uh, the gig, the Gitala gig. It was sponsored in was it Newcastle last year. Uh, they done Sam Fender, I think. Uh, yeah. it, and basically, they had platforms, and you're yeah. like, that's pure. So I had a dystopian idea that like, you're all like, pure carted in your wee pods, and you've taste on, and mm-hmm. you know, that just takes atmosphere right out. Okay? Mm-hmm. So if that's, if that's the direction of that to get in, then we're going to need a bigger field. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. Especially <laughs> the big bands and us, yeah. we get there. But yeah. that's just... Well, with, with oh, everything yes, happening, you've definitely had lots of chances, as you were saying there, to kind of try wee demos out and things like that. These uh, are getting the creative juices going. So what kind of new material are you coming out with? Um, and have you got anything that is maybe that we should be keeping the eyes peeled for? Ah, uh, well, we've got, uh, we created a Facebook, we've had a Facebook page for years, but we had to try and expand it. So we've done the wee message and everybody does, you know, I follow the band, blah, blah, blah. So we got a bit more followers through that. Uh, created an Instagram because that's I'd say that's more universal. We use like your tagging and all that kind of stuff. You put the right tags in, people through the world can see your stuff. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I've got that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got YouTube. We've got all our old demos that we've done back in the day. Uh, live performances, live studio, mm-hmm. uh, live rehearsal recordings, all that stuff. So on YouTube. But we'll be writing. I, I'm definitely writing different songs to what I was writing ten years ago. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Mm-hmm. My, my kind of teach space is opened up in that respect. Uh, I'm not kind of writing a lot of my old songs would be dead like a style and all that and this and that, but I'm writing different types of songs and uh, I think that's what you've got today, but it's quite a stage stage. You've wrote these kind of songs anyway, so you're like, you kind of rewrite something I've already done. Yeah. So you need to kind of try and expand and just kind of change your idea and your, your focal point. You, you want the song to sound like and you want it to be. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I've got I've got phones, get two phones there, and they're just full of demos and all that. And the rest of the band are all right, and they've all got demos. So the way we're all talking a lot, if we get, if we eventually want to get an EP out this year, if everything goes to plan and, and everything opens up. But the aim is to eventually get an album out. But the way we are gone and it's going to be like a double or a treble album. I think. <laughs> we've got two songs out of there. The good thing about this time is we've got four songwriters in the band this time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the bass player and the, and the little guitar player, and they both write songs and all. Mm-hmm. So, so, it, it's more a creative input for four different minds now, which, right. which makes it sound a mere uh, mature sound. Do you know what I mean? Is it just in and just thrashing guitar? Like, we, uh, we hear like kind of a lot of early bands, like there is a bit of start to stone back it's a bit. Like, it's just it's unfortunate when this has happened because it was actually going in a really, was, really good way. Uh, and everybody was excited about it and we were uh, probably a month off gigging. Because we were going to start doing like kind of that uh, kind of the, the studio we rehearsing is kind of big enough. You could have like four or five people in. Uh, that kind of mini gig thing. Uh-huh. So we were, we were ready to do that and then it would have been... What we, all, what we also done is we sent some demos to a couple of record labels just to see 
but kind of feedback or whatever they had tough to say and we got in touch with one man and contacted us and he says blah 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 they liked their sound this and that but the, the songs we sent them were recorded 10 years ago do you know what I mean so mm-hmm. for us that was like a pure G up we were like, well, that guy's heard that song for the first time and he thinks it sounds fresh and current mm-hmm. whereas it was wrote 10 years ago but it's tells me a lot. It's mean I'm kind of kind of be bothered playing it. Do you know what I mean? Kind of thing. <laughs> so but he also he offered us some form of wasn't he? So much a record deal, but it was like a what would you call it? It was it was like a scanton kind of. You know what I mean? uh, yeah. But uh, it's the last proposal I've seen aye, in a long time. Oh, definitely. But he just basically wanted to run with it. You know what I mean? And mm. we weren't really getting much back to it, and it was just kind of. Or in, uh, so. I know, he's a bit mad. I just kind of, you can see there's people that would sign something like that. They're just people that are desperate and they just and they're trying to get ahead, but you're not really getting ahead. They're just kind of selling your soul to the devil, so yes. to speak. It's all cliche saying that, but that's what, that's what happens with record deals. Do you think so, that'll happen to a lot of young bands that are coming through? Uh, oh, I definitely. See, see the one that I, I remember. Like the most recent one I seen it was Tom. Was it, what's his name again? Is it Tom Clark for the Enemy? Tom Clark, right? Eh? Tom Clark for the Enemy, and he was on Twitter and he was talking to folk because he's doing like a kind of solo tour now. Mm-hmm. And he was talking with somebody online, and he mentioned that that see they'll be living down these towns. Their first album was only yeah. a big album. Uh, he ended up own, my, own money for that. Own money for it. I'm sure that's what he was. He, 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 he owed enough. money for that, or he he's never seen anything because like. I've seen a, a coin all, all the royalties he's paid off what he owed the record company or mm-hmm. something. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's never seen a coin for that album. So, uh, that's another bit of advice in it. Like, young bands or artists are uh-huh. out there. Like, we just small print if you're getting offered. But, and that's the thing. You can date yourself. You can put yourself out there on Spotify. You can gain a, a audience through social media. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then, fair enough, if you're good enough and you're big enough, you'll get booked into the big venues. You might meet your money off your touring. Everything else sure, sure. 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 Self-promotion. Self-promotion. It's all there for you today. You know what I mean? You don't need to be signed to a label to say, oh, that's me, I've made it, I'm going to be a superstar. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the kind of angle we're getting done now as well. We're like, ah, well, once we've got our stuff figured out and we've got songs ready, we'll just put them out ourselves and hopefully they're good enough and if people like them, they want to buy into it. That's it. Yeah, just like to like not like it, that's it, innit? Yeah. Just, just keep going as well. Don't stop. You know what I mean? It's just because just because somebody's like, doesn't mean to say, they're rubbish, you're right, and just mm-hmm. keep going. You come so, out of uh, one day. Is there any advice that you'd give to like a young a young artist or like your younger self, like if they are wanting to pursue a career in the music industry? Did you think so? Just don't just goes back to what I was saying earlier on. Don't don't feel like you can't express yourself because of other people's opinion. Do you know what I mean? If if, if that's where the road you gotta go down, if you feel that's right and it sounds good, just do it. Don't go, oh no, my pals aren't going to like that because it sounds like I don't know. I'm going to see anybody and then that's what I say. If that's what you, actually, you really, you really want to do and you're, you're like deeply aye. passionate about it, then cut out all the kind of negative elements of life that can drag you down, i.e., drink, drugs, negative relationships, and all that. People that they bring you down, you know what I mean? Just you get yourself a target aye. and just stick to it. So just, just, keep going. just keep people, going. Positive people, aye. So in just with positive people, aye. Mm-hmm. There's nothing worse than people doing about you, telling you you're never going to. Achieve what you're trying to do. Is see if it's like in your mind, your dad's move it. Aye, definitely. <laughs> get a tent and get a bass and your guitar. <laughs> get a few mushrooms. Get down there. What did I buy? You always look for musicians. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant guys. That's excellent advice. And um, we've got a lot of young people that uh, perform music at the complex. We've got a music group who are usually. If the complex is open, they're in a Tuesday night and they're, they're rehearsing all day and all night uh, for wee sessions that will do for, for people coming in, their members and that. So um, hopefully they'll be watching this. And um, if you are and you want to listen to some of the Modern Kind, you can get them on Instagram. It's the Modern Kind underscore TMK. Um, and then as they say, um, their songs are on YouTube now as well. Um, I'm sure we've got a couple of videos that you drew singing in the cafe for us. Oh, have you? I forgot yes, about it. You Mm-hmm. Very so good, the rubbish. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> rubbish. Most of them is a wee, a wee montage. Aye, track. go for it, go for it. There was a wee acoustic set that you used to have done as well. Uh, was it for Ox Jam or something? I think we ch- chick was sitting up. Oh, I think that was a riot, man. I mean, the cells is like, we knew an arc, we were like, I'd like half a real to rehearse four songs and 
one eight two is didn't know the songs or something. It was like, nah, don't just keep back to yourself. Totally mate. Totally <laughs> <wait back. laughs> just keep that back. Back. He's for what about it? No, I mean, just keep back yourself. I wrapped it for five years now. I set them off wheels. <laughs> I've just cancelled the band again because I brought that memory up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. After the night, see you later, right? <laughs> Brilliant, guys. No, honestly, I appreciate it. I appreciate your advice to the young people and all that. And I appreciate it. Oh, no bother, man. No bother. Um, we're not done there, but because what we do at the end with the guests is the guests go up against the co host. Um, so right. you'll be going up against Kirsty in a quiz. Um, it's a music quiz. Um, so hopefully you should be all right at that. Um, <laughs> How do you how do you stay with Yeah, I listen, I listen to the Super Scoreboard <laughs> nice days. And I listen to Huey, uh, who's up against the, the collar, you know what I mean? So Aye. I'm actually not bad at this kind of stuff. Right, okay, good. Thanks, well, you yeah. get a question each in this one, so you just get to decide if he's want to go first or second. Right, you want to go first? You go first, then. You go first, then. You go first. He's going first, right, so... If you just get it wrong, Kirsty can steal the answer, and then she'll get right. it in advice first, all right? So... First question for the modern kind. What is Elton John's real name? Nay phones, by the way. Sorry. No, I don't know. I know it's... It's a mad name, isn't it? Is it no Michael or something? <laughs> <laughs> <Like> John. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know, mate. Don't know. Passing it. Kirsty. Pass. Is it Reginald? Uh, I don't know. I think Oh, Reginald. Um, nah, it's, it's yeah, good. Right, I'll give you a half point. It is Reginald. It's Reginald Dwight. Oh, see, I've read that. I was going to say Dwight. I was going to say Dwight, and then I was like, no, nah, I'm going to be embarrassed. I was going to say Dwight, and I was like, Do you know why I know that? It's because I went to see <laughs> the film. Like, you know, ah, yeah. you were saying Rocket Man the day. Yeah. Right, that's what it is, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like a half a point. That's good. Half a point. Right, okay. So next question goes to you, Kirsty. What year did Oasis release? Definitely, maybe. Oh, what? Um, if I get Ash Lang. Boys are smiling, sorry. I'll get, I I'll get um, It's no 1993. We'll pass it over to the modern kind. 94. Mm-hmm. Go with 94. Answer. 94. That's correct. Well done. What? I was that close. That was a pure guess. Aye, yeah, well done. Oh, I'm lucky. But you still got it wrong. I so I was just proud that I was even the right century. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, next question, uh, the boys, is what university did Queen guitarist Brian May attend? He gets Oxford. Oxford, does he Oxford? Man, get Oxford. 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 Uh, Oxford. Uh, Oxford. Uh, Cambridge. No, Cambridge. Yeah. They're London, aren't they? Cambridge, go with Cambridge. No, we'll go to Rang. We'll go to Rang. I'll do that. I'll stop you. Is it not a Scottish one? No? I don't know. You've seen the fall. I've seen the fall. Have they already said the answer? I thought it was a Scottish uni. But I um, must be just making that up then. Cool, uh, your right, no, you're totally... F- I'm going to say Cambridge, no, since you said Oxford. It's no, It's uh, Imperial College London. They know existed. Oh, they <laughs> not heard it. <laughs> I thought it was like one in Edinburgh. I'm just thinking <laughs> The castle. Right. <laughs> right, next question is to you, Kirsty. So it's right. one to one and a half. That's the scores. <laughs> what is the name of Amy Winehouse's debut album? Back to Black. It's no Back to Black, no. So we pass it all. Frank. That is Frank. Aye, well done, guys. <laughs> Good Come on. Really good answer. Right, next question for you as well. So, at which London university did the band Coldplay get together? Mm. 
These questions are shocking. I got these off the internet this week. I usually make the questions myself, but... I think you're ready. I'll see your questions, <laughs> man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Two guys. Two guys. <laughs> <laughs> two guys don't even want a tie. Aye, I know. <laughs> uh, just go away. I'd go away. Go away eating, maybe. Eating? No, it's not eating. No, Cambridge. <laughs> go away Cambridge. Cambridge is <laughs> not No, I'll pass it to Kirsty. Um. What, what? Say the question again. How do you find it? Cause it's, see, because it's online, I'm like scrolling up and down. Uh, at which London University did the band Coldplay get together? This is another one I've not heard of, so <laughs> we're doing well. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I it's your worst name for a uni ever as well, what you hear? University College London. Oh, yeah, you see it. Mm. Skip the uni questions, man. <laughs> you, Who's number one in 1985? I was going to say UCL. <laughs> the, next, the next 12 are just uni questions as well. Oh, <laughs> right, then. Uh, right, next are any of them Cambridge eating? I had all actually in the field. That's what we know. <laughs> right, Kirsty, how many members were there in Blazing Squad? <gasps> 21. No. Oh no, that's so solid, crew. No. Oh no! <gasps> 12. No, it's 10. Oh. 10, 10 blazers. I was feeling like, yes, but ten, I was 10 blazers, up. man. 10 of the blazer boys. Shake. Not a Jake between them. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the next question goes to you again. Uh, what year was the original Live Aid? Oh, uh, that's a long queen and I played that one. Go for it. 84? No, oh, it's no 84. So we pass it to Kirsty. I've got a clue here, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, are, right. they, are they near? Uh, I don't know. Ah, you're cheating. Is See, always... you're probably sure might help me. Um, Let's go for... 87. <laughs> No. 85. You got another shot at it. What is that? It was 85. You were close. 85. Oh, Wait, that's what he said. He said 84. He said 84. Oh, but you, you had said, oh, ask me a question of when. Oh, 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 <laughs> number one. <laughs> I was like, Did something trippy just happened. <laughs> right, Kirsty, you need, you need this to get back into it, by the way. I don't know what number okay. one, but you're one number behind. Finish this David Bowie lyric. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you know what? Say it again. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and. You know, I, you know I always sing the rang lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> we need Angela on for this one. I know we need Angela. <laughs> um. You've got the right tune now. Da uh, Time's ticking. Dance, dance, <laughs> dance off. Is that your answer? Dance it off. Dance it off. With me. Dance it off. With me, nah. No. <laughs> dance the blues. Dance the blues is correct, aye. Let's let's dance. I wasn't let's even dance. close. Dance the blues, aye. Um, so I think if he's get this one, he's a one. In uh, the next, yeah, yeah. close one. It's a close one there. <laughs> so the next question is about your favourite band as well, guys. So, right. did Robbie Williams leave? Take that. Oh, oh, I've, the year it broke my heart, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've waited half an hour, you know. Eh, <laughs> uh, oh, can't go, man. We drink. I'm going to go for the same year. No, no. Do you know what? I'm going to go. 96. 96, we'll go for. I'm going to go right, so we pass it to Kirsty to try and stay in. 98? It's no 98, it was 95. 90. I see. Oh, Do you know how? Really? I was going to say 94, and then I, I remember if definitely maybe it was 94, Oasis used to hate the fat dancer. Ah, yeah, that's right. So I was oh, nearly there. No, it's probably how we left, you know what I mean? <laughs> a year later. <laughs> ah, fat yes, man. I'm off. Right, Kirsty, you really need this one. Which city were the bands Arctic Monkeys, Pulp, and the Human League formed in? 
Which city were they from? Aye, then? aye. I think the boys have got this wrapped up. You say it, but he's a gay chap. I'm for a minch. Manchester. I know, but Manchester, so I'll pass it well for the win. Aye, right. there you go. Sheffield. Yeah, feels correct. Aye, well done. The modern <laughs> Kenyans have won the quiz this week. On the <laughs> What's the prize? Uh, you get to come into the youth for free one night. You get free entry. Is that a disco one? Don't let him in. And cut that bit out. <laughs> yeah, actually, what do you say, man? This school burnt his head. Yeah, aye. Right. Did you have one of them with you as well? I turned my back pocket. In the toilets where you take off the roof. Is there a disco on? Hey. Right, thanks very much again, guys, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, we put this up on our YouTube on a Thursday night, so you guys will be watching it on the Thursday, hopefully. Um, thanks again to the Marlon King for coming on you can get them on Instagram on Facebook check out their songs on YouTube as well uh, if you send us that stuff we'll, we'll plug it in the, on our social medias um, and in the bio for the for the YouTube video as well guys Wait, sound, man. if you're looking to get us on social media you can get us on Facebook at Kelly Youth Complex staff on Twitter at Youth Complex CYC on Instagram Youth underscore Complex our TikTok is Kelly Youth Complex and you can email us at CYC Youth Team at gmail.com um, that's if you want to add in any ideas for topics, any ideas for challenges between me and Kirsty or any guests that you think should come on to the Milk Round. Uh, thanks again for watching guys, check out our other videos, like the video, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications and share the videos on all your social medias as well. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on guys and thanks thank you for having us. Cheers. 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 Cheers.